It was like, I know I don't have the strength to be able to really accomplish anything in one class. My hands would come out of practice like completely cramped up. I had to like bend them open. Every person's journey is really unique and different. Uh, I feel like I've been very lucky. More vulnerable, more connected, more like a deeper layer of emotion. There's so much, there's so much power in vulnerability. Wow. The first time that I ever saw Ariel, I was in college, I believe. And I had a friend there doing a dance production that incorporated some aerial silk into it. That was the first time that I really saw it like up close and personal. And I remember being fascinated by it. Intuitively knowing I wasn't strong enough to really get anything good, he was actually offering me a few classes. I started with aerial silk. It was so graceful and fluid the way that people moved on it. So that really drew me in. And that was what grabbed me initially. And then I started working on Lyra, which is a, a circle hoop. With silk, you're grabbing with your hands vertically, and then on hoop, you're mostly grabbing horizontally. And so the vertical grip is actually much more, more difficult, um, involves more of your forearms. The hoop is a metal circle, basically, so it hits you in, in different places on your body, your, your legs, your hips, your arms, you know, and so you get a lot of bruises on that when you first start because your body has to kind of like toughen up and, and get used to, okay, this is where I'm getting getting impacted. Now I also work on a custom apparatus that I call Aerial Marionette. And that's sort of a unique apparatus. There's not that many people that work on it. I have my hands and my feet connected at all times. It's over a pulley system. So if my arm goes down, my leg goes up. I had actually worked in a show with, with that apparatus and the aerial choreographer had brought these and he was like, I created this. I don't know what's possible on this, so figure it out. And so I started experimenting and it was a lot of, you know, scraped knees and <laughs> like, like, like almost hitting my face on the floor at times because it's just such a different dynamic when you're on any other aerial apparatus, really, if you're like, you're using your upper body so much, you're pulling a lot. And because of the pulley system on the aerial marionette, it's like, if you just pull your arms, you will just flip upside down. And that was something completely new for me, so it took a lot to, to get used to that. I think something that people don't realize about being an aerialist as a career is how physically demanding it is layers of things from just strength and conditioning to flexibility and m the way your body moves. There's so many different aspects of it that, that all have to come together. People come to a show and they, they come for a night and they see it and they're like, wow, that was amazing. Oh, well, you only work for five minutes. There's years of preparation that goes into that five minutes. And even doing the same show every single night five, sometimes six days a week, sometimes multiple times in a day. It's very demanding. So right now, I'm not training that much. I think I train about once a week at this point. I'm performing about three or four nights a week, sometimes doing multiple shows in each night. But when I was starting, I was training five days a week, like super, super intense, like for five hours at a time, trying to, trying to build my body into where I wanted it to be with, you know, strength training, with skills training, with flexibility training. It was like all in one day, it would be like, okay, what am I, how am I mapping this out and what am I doing? And I really found that like twice a week was enough to maintain my skill, but if I wanted to really improve, I had to be there at least three, four times in a week. And here, really, like, you can take your time landing on the floor, but land so that you're always in the same direction each time. Yeah. You know, because this, this time your feet were on the I other know, side. I know, I noticed. And you can, you can totally, like, look, check your surroundings. You're not spinning that fast right there. Mm -hmm. To see, okay, I, like, and even drag your toe on the floor yeah. to slow you down. You know, because mm -hmm. that's also a nice image where you're just, like, barely touching the floor. Okay. And then you're like, okay, I'm, now I'm going to slide because I'm in the right spot. Mm -hmm. 
So my normal day when I have a show later is I, I like to take like a really long morning kind of just for myself. So I'll wake up, I'll kind of do some things around the house. Usually I go to the beach and kind of I'll stretch at the beach, kind of get into my body, especially if I've been performing the night before. I'll like do a really deep stretch in my body, kind of open everything up and then go for a swim because I feel like the ocean is so healing and it's kind of this rejuvenating energy you know, making sure I'm I'm eating right and doing everything like in a timely way so that I can be prepared. I kind of have this ritual set up to to lead up to the show. I hope that people would say that they were moved and inspired by what I what I do, what I've done. I want them to feel touched. I want someone to watch a performance of mine on stage and feel like emotionally connected to me. That, oh, I've felt that way, even though maybe I'm doing something wild that they could never dream of doing, but they can identify with the emotion that I'm bringing through and whatever is stirred inside of them that, that I've touched them in some way. And to me, that's like the most amazing thing to be able to touch many people. The message that I'm trying to convey is that there is so much power in vulnerability. The moments that I feel broken and sad and depleted, I can share those with other people and they become these little gifts. If I'm sharing that with the world, it's like, oh, someone else feels that way. Someone else knows this place inside of me. I'm not alone. And I really want to tap into those places that maybe aren't as perfect as we want them to be. You know, they can feel sad or angry or inadequate or whatever it is and like put those on stage be like and that's okay too every single person has something unique to share <laughs>